After watching some of the D-line film from the end zone angle, particularly, and trying to post up a video for you guys that got trimmed horribly because uh, of a copyright issue, I decided to go back and look at some Modafe Owe film, particularly end zone angle film that I had from his rookie year. Uh, there's a big difference, to be honest with you, in some of the things that he's being asked to do, I guess, and some of the things that he's being asked to react to, and the way he's attacking on pass pass rush situations. I like him better in a three point stance and and I didn't have that realization until the last like half hour, forty five minutes, watching some of the film from last year. I feel like he attacks better from a three point stance in the pass rush and it seems like he's standing up on pretty much every down at this point. Um whereas Justin Houston's in a three point stance, kind of ready to attack at a particular angle, run his move. Owe seems to be reacting more. I've said it multiple times. I think he's an attacking player at this point in his career. That doesn't mean that he can't read and react. That's not what that means. It just means that you get more production out of him. You get more impact plays when he's coming downhill, when he's attacking, coming forward. You know, does that mean that he might get kicked out sometimes? Possibly. Does that mean that he might be the read man and the quarterback gives it to the running back? Possibly. We're going to look at some plays from uh, the Miami game. Hopefully they don't get... Uh, it for being part of uh, Baldy's breakdowns, and and you can watch all of them. All right, so here's Owe on the right side of the defense, away from the back. I'm not sure that this is a good use of his skills. Uh, clearly, Tyreek Hill requires you know some modifications. This is a very similar thing to what we did on some of our t uh, one of the touchdowns we gave up uh, later in the game. We're dropping him out to the side where Tyreek Hill is, presumably to help out with the underneath coverage. I just don't know how you watch this as a coach and you think, okay, this is a player who's reacting the way we want him to in this situation. He's not an inside linebacker who's used to playing four or five yards off the line of scrimmage, and he's not going to apparently you know, attack at a particular angle here and really be um, emphatic and make a decision. I'm going to run through in between these two linemen, and I'm going to blow somebody up, whoever I run into, you can see how passive he is and seemingly lost on that particular play. I think he's a far better football player than that play gives um, indication for. And I'd like to show you some film from 2021 to just remind you. A little bit better stance, in my opinion. You still get the ball being flicked out here to the running back for a decent gain. A little bit better stance. I'm a, I'm a stickler on stance, whether I'm a coach or trying to break down film. I'd like to see the power angles you know, in, in the upper body and the hips. And then also power angles in the legs. You don't really have one here, but because that's his front foot. So it's a little better than the last play. I would still like to see him in a three-point stance if he's going to rush the passer. And running a move, at least he's getting his hands out here. That's a low bar for NFL players being controlled at this point and unable to get his hands up because the, the uh, left tackle, Armstead, has got his got control of him essentially by having the, inside, the left hand inside on his chest. Easy completion down into the boundary. <clears throat> If he's going to be a boundary side outside linebacker and not have the nickel to help him, which he's to the boundary here again, I understand why maybe in some cases we might be uh, having him rush a little slower. Now, this is a screen. I might have been a little harsh talking about this earlier on second or third watch. So he's going to switch with Campbell. You know, we've run this stunt many times, whatever you want to call it. But I just, I just feel like Owe is sometimes one of those guys that is on his track and for whatever reason, doesn't see the traffic or the trash on his track. I'd like to see him, you know, absolutely blow somebody up who's on his path. And sometimes I think his pad level is such that his body's not in position for unexpected contact like this. Doesn't mean that he's not a good player. I just think that as a young player right now, there's a certain level of things that are happening and maybe are happening a little too fast. I don't like the indecision here. I'm not saying he's doing anything wrong because I don't know the call. You know, this is a it's a beautiful play by Miami for real. I think actually the NFL does have somebody who broke this down. So hopefully this uh, play goes through for you guys. But they're leaving him unblocked, and the left tackle and left guard are kind of you know stepping up and then moving out to go get blocks on the screen. You've got the back crossing face, and they've done a nice job of scheming this. If you ask me. Looks like Tyreek Hill running across his face, so a real play fake there to a, to a premier athlete. And we've got a lot of eyes in the backfield, and we just we're not lose we're not gaining another defender over here like they're going to gain, you know, two guys on the screen. 
Having said that, we're talking about Owe. I would like for his read to be definitive if he's got the back on his side. Either force a give read, you know, run right at the quarterback's face, or force a keep read, run down the line of scrimmage. Uh, he seems to be someone, and this is the disciplined way to, to play it, to be honest with you, is to be square. I don't like his stance here at all. You can see hands on the knees. I just don't think hands on the knees is the way to be in any kind of stance in football. Inside linebacker, sometimes you all have your hand on knees, but it's a little different there. Josh Bynes is in an athletic stance. If, if it was basketball and a guy was coming down on a fast break this way at Josh Bynes, Josh Bynes' hips, he's got pow, good power angles, you know, obviously in the feet and the knees and the, um, <clears throat> and the femur and then upper body to the hips. So he's got, he'd be able to move if there was a guard coming down on him. You know, he'd be able to move this way laterally and stay square. Owe's body is not in that type of stance right now, if you ask me. Having said that, compare it to Houston. You know, it's not altogether that disim- that that different. However, Houston's hands are not on his knees. I'm a stickler for stance, always have been. You may not recognize the importance of it. That's okay. In my opinion, a great stance means you can get out of that stance quickly. Is he going to stop this play? No. I would just like to see us put him in positions to be a little more aggressive. This is a really nice play by Miami. you got to give them credit for some of the stuff they did on offense. All right, let's go to some 2021 film so we can see what he's capable of in certain situations. Here he is playing field side, outside linebacker. You're going to get this, like, toss stretch to the field, and Owe takes on the tight end and then the pulling tackle and is out there to get involved in the tackle with Marlon Humphrey. He's over here to the right-hand side. So what you're going to get, this tight end is going to try to work to his outside. Always going to work this way. I know you guys have the frame there that you're dealing with. Simultaneous to that, this tackle is going to pull and try to loop outside. Always going to take on both of those blockers, meaning the tight end and then the tackle. Stays outside on both of them. Great job. That's to the field as well. Now, Marlon Humphrey plays a role in this, but even if Marlon Humphrey's not here, Odafe always making that tackle. That's how athletic he is. He's good enough to play for us and do a great job. On some of the run plays last year away, you're going to see him hesitate, kind of like I talked about on that screen, that fake the Tyree kill that the Dolphins ran. This is obviously under center, so it's a different threat. And the Dolphins are, you know, obviously a very different offense than dealing with even Cleveland last year, Cleveland being an under center run team. But you see always at least a little more definitive when, and, and uh, decisive, excuse me, once he makes up his mind to go from the end zone angle, you'll see him veer off a little bit. I just feel like last year he's attacking a little more, at least coming forward, not standing still as much. You know, maybe this play isn't a great comparison to that uh, that Dolphins play that was a screen because there's a lot of eye candy there, you know, clearly with Tyreek Hill being on his side. Another example of run play away. So, uh, you know, he's he's patient on those things. Fine. You know, he's not running towards the quarterback to get the sack. He's not taking off down the line. He's visually confirming, you know, that the ball has either been handed off or kept by the quarterback, and it's difficult because the design of it is shut is such that the quarterback's back is turned to him. That's the way it works a lot of times in football. Quarterback's back turned, hides whether he's handed off the football or whether he's got it, and it, you know, creates indecision in defensive players' minds and causes them to be slightly out of position. A way I offer to you, for whatever reason, was playing some of these concepts better last year. And the thing that I noticed is different, and this is my main point, I say this till the end, so if you watched, you know, hopefully you enjoy it. He's just better in a three-point stance, it looks like to me. Attacking, I think it gets his hands and his body in a position where he can attack. Look at this rush. I haven't seen this guy at all. Have you? I mean, name the play. I know he had five QB pressures against the Jets. And you're going to get the end zone angle here in a moment. That get off is pretty good. I know that I know that everybody says you know he's slow off the line, but that's pretty good. Compare him to the edge player on the other side. Look at their helmets. Their helmets are just you know Owe is what maybe six ten inches behind that guy. Maybe not even that. Probably actually like four inches. I think he might be better in a three point stance on pass rush situations. And if we're going to be in our nickel defense and he's going to be one of our four rushers, then maybe he needs to be in a three-point stance. Look at the hand swipe. Have you seen him use these moves this year? I don't know that I have. 
I, I don't know that I've seen him swipe with the inside hand up and then the outside hand timing it up like a like a offbeat one two in boxing like jab right right cross I mean such that he wins I know that he doesn't hit the quarterback or sack him but that's a rush that I don't know that we've seen this year Again, down here. Now, he's trying to time to snap up. This is down there in Miami in the Thursday night game last year. He's trying to time to snap up. You can see him flinch. At least he's attacking. No, he doesn't get to the quarterback. I think he actually did get credit for a quarterback hit. He is making contact with a quarterback with the balls out. Ends up being dropped down here to the boundary. I don't know that he looks anywhere near as explosive standing up in a two-point stance as a rusher as he does in a three-point stance think for his benefit and ours until we get some more of our outside linebacker depth back or we sign JPP or something it might be in our best interest to put him in a three-point stance in some of these situations two-point stance down here against Cleveland they switch Baker Mayfield and Jarvis Landry obviously neither one of which is still with the team the thing that was notable about to me about this play is when you get the end zone angle pay attention to how many times the left tackle gets his hands on Oway and Owe still continues to attack. This year versus contact, physical contact with a blocker, particularly lineman, Owe's charge seems to be stopped. I'm not going to slow the video down, but I'll, I'll let it run through one time. Watch how many times the tackle continues to make contact with him and Owe keeps attacking. There's one. Swipe with the outside hand. There's another one, always trying to evade, almost knocks him off balance. I don't know. I feel like he's playing through contact better, and I don't know why that would be. Maybe this year he's being asked to do more drills that are not pass rush oriented. I don't know that for a fact. That's just speculation. Last one from 2021, his first sack down here at the bottom side. He's going to step out with Darren Waller because he's assigned to jam Darren Waller. And the move. The decisive, clear move, I haven't seen one of these. I haven't. Is the position he's being asked to play so drastically different that we can't see these things? I mean, these skills, these abilities don't disappear. They, they do not, you know. They're unlocked when you're put in position to use them. Just like a car key, right? You can't take the wrong car key and put it in a truck and have it work. You can pick the lock if you know how to do it, but you can't make a Honda Accord car key fit on a Ford Explorer. And that's almost what it seems like right now is he's being put in the wrong situations for him to succeed. All right, a couple more plays here against Miami. Under center, he's got the tight end and the fullback to his side. Sometimes it's just scheme. Now, we don't really get a great view of this. We got him up here against number 81. Would we like for him to win against a tight end? Of course we would. I suspect that sometimes this year he's expected to jam the tight end and hold up his release, which is what he appears to be doing right here to me. That's why I think right now he's looking right at the tight end. And watch his hand placement. He's not trying to work a pass rush move. You know what I mean? He's trying to get his hands on the tight end, hold the point of attack. It's very similar to what Washington and Pierce are expected to do. So some of these situations, he's almost like, you know, he's a run first defender. You know, it's a run down. They're under center. Makes sense to me. You, we can't complain about everything. <clears throat> some of his usage, though, to, to be honest with you, I mean, the athleticism's still there, right? I mean, you're not going to be able to run some of these plays to his side. Even, even if Chuck Clark is not here, right? This is a foot race to the sideline, and that's Edmonds, who's an incredibly fast guy. Odafe always going to make that tackle. It might be a two, three, or four-yard gain, but he's going to make that tackle, even if there's no secondary force help there for him. He's athletic enough to make these plays. The skills are there. We just got to figure out the right way to, to get them to be demonstrated. I think this is the first play I showed you. This is what me personally I would want to avoid. Uh, I would try to figure out a way to A, encourage this young man. Uh, I have never coached any level you know, near this, obviously, but I'm just offering to you, I would want to try to give him the best opportunity to, su to succeed if after two weeks the general consensus is that he's given us nothing. Now, that's not really the reality of it. I think he's given us some quarterback pressures. 
I'm not sure that we're gaining anything from him dropping out and pass here. If you appreciate this video, please let me know in the comment section because uh, I've had three videos in the last two days get copyright hit because NFL uses one play that um, I use in a breakdown, and maybe their guy that does it might talk for like 12 seconds about the play, whereas I'll annotate it and sit here and talk to you about what they're reading and a possible adjustment that maybe we could use. And in my, in my opinion, the stuff that they put out on the NFL channel is just pure lazy, and I said it. And if you disagree with me, that's fine, no problem. But if you appreciate these film study videos, please let me know. It's kind of frustrating to have to go through those situations and then go back and re-edit or re-trim videos that I've already done content for. Um, number one. Number two, if you really appreciate this video, you know, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Like the video to help it get more exposure and consider sharing it on social media to help my videos get more exposure and reach. Appreciate you guys' time.